by Dr. Uh, Kimaya to speak about machine learning and AI, how simulators assess surgical performance. So over to you, Dr. Kimaya. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about a very interesting topic, machine learning and artificial intelligence, how simulator assesses surgical performance. So as Dr. Ashish said, Help Me See Simulator is the only simulator which has haptic feedback based and it has an intuitive simulation software. Uh, our simulator assesses the performance of a trainee by using CMOSCAR criteria, which is actually assessed by 12 international experts from 8 countries. This is how the CMOSCAR uh, table looks like. Here you can see all the steps of M6 surgery and how you have to grade a student like if it's novice or if it is a good student or if it is a confident certain surgeon. So in Help Me See Simulation Training, we first uh, give first few attempts as in learning mode where the training tools will be uh, visible on the desktop screen of the student. Complications, if it does something, it's visible on the desktop screen. Performance data uh, is seen when you click on the desktop and you can see how you are performing in the particular step. And uh, we aim to get maximum satisfactory attempts from every trainee. And if the trainee has a satisfactory attempt, then only we shift him to the assessment module. So here, um, because the trainee is doing good, there are no complications shown on the desktop. So now here the trainee is completing the capture axis. We go inside like this and trainee is doing good a tear, he's starting the CCC and he's completing the CCC as well properly. But if at all the trainee has something like this and if the tear run out, then the machine will definitely give you a sign of tear now and the uh, instruments will turn red. This simulator assesses itself. So now instruments are turned red and this is a game over situation where the trainee has to perform a re-attempt. He cannot continue the same attempt anymore. So there are some of more complications like endothelial touch or contact with iris. The simulator gets itself with a software and it will tell you that you are doing some complications. Be careful. So in cortical uh, wash also, you can see such complications like cap capture aspiration. And um, as this time we have launched FECO. So even we have six criteria for FECO as well. So here the surgeon is uh, touching the anterior capsule. So you can see that um, the mark, which is a green color mark, is showing that the FECO is too much uh, near the capsule and is touching the anterior capsule. Here it is near the endothelium and you are causing damage to the corneal endothelium. Here the trainee has made a very deep trench. So the simulator assesses everything and gives you the feedback. Uh, here there is a tear, this, uh, uh, total, uh, because the instruments are turned red, that shows that it's, the trainee cannot continue the surgery again because he has done too many complications in the same patients in the simulator of course then like this you can see on the desktop screen where you have uh, on the right side you can see all the complications which are there so here the trainee is actually uh, caused the posterior capsule rupture so if you click a button on the desktop of uh, performance data you can see all these components where you can exactly see what all in which steps you have gone wrong and what you have done basically if you have done how much general breakage how many times you have done endothelial touch everything is assessed by simulator it's unbelievable actually so here because it's 10 percent of uh, zonular uh, breakage you can still continue that but if you are actually having capsular rupture then you cannot continue the simulator assesses that as well so here uh, when the uh, trainee was doing the four quadrants this you can see on the scores and because he has done already rupture, the simulator gives you minus scores. So even that simulator can uh, judge that much of de in depth. So um, coming to assessments, when we get satisfactory attempts from a student, then only we shift him to assessment as I told you before. And this is the different uh, mode where we can shift the student and he does assessments. Uh, the main thing is in assessment, the trainee will not see any complications, even if he does anything, uh, it is not shown on a desktop. Uh, this data actually we are using and uh, in something called as ATMS, Advanced Training Management System, where this data we use uh, and to grade the st every student uh, differently. So this is how we have to go in the system and we have to start grading the student. Here you can get all the steps. We go in every each and every step and grade every student. 
so suppose this is for scleral groove so one student has is not doing properly so i have given the roll over roll over means if you the student is not doing well you want the student to practice something more the next day he will come and practice the same step again so as a instructor i will give a roll over to him so this is all recorded here and the other student is doing well so i have given proficient uh, certificate to him so this data is analyzed by something called as uh, sbls that is simulation based learning system so this report as instructors we get it daily in all our centers made be in india outside india everywhere uh, here we get exact, exactly uh, what all the student has done what are different steps of course we always see how many satisfactory attempts every student has got how many times the students have got uh, game over so we can actually see the performance of the student from this data and you can see uh, even this is whenever you see the data directly uh, visually also you can uh, say that which student is doing uh, which step better when you get too much of oranges that means the student is actually making complications if you are getting red zone there that means students are getting game overs many times so this is where we know that the student has to improve more and we have to give him more uh, attempts to do as against whenever we get such a report that means the student is actually very well performing he is getting all satisfactory attempts whatever he is doing so as a instructor we are happy and trainee also is very happy with us so it's very important for us uh, as a, a software uh, with this and uh, we are as uh, dr shankar said as a instructor we can uh, basically give a very effective feedback to uh, our trainees so thank you so much for patient listening thank you dr kimaya uh, for the wonderful overview of how you assess uh, the performance on the surgical simulator uh, it's also important to hear from the end user who 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 have undergone simulation based training uh, uh, we have amongst us uh, a very distinguished uh, person uh, dr vignita who is in the audience and she has uh, undergone simulation based training with dr shankar uh, at madurai um, i don't want to put you on the spot dr vignita but i would be very happy if you share uh, with the audience your experience uh, on uh, virtual reality simulation based training on the help me see uh, platform uh, thank you dr vignita yeah yeah no problem uh, good morning everybody i have been there for the simulation training program for one and a half days uh, it's actually uh, it's actually very nice to have the feel of the uh, instruments there um being the wet lab there as you said uh, wet lab is just going to give us the tunnel feeling and the rex feeling and the other steps are not going to be uh, as good as the simulator one simulator is uh, taking us the way reading us get us repeat the steps equally and uh, it's nice to have a progression in it as uh, we have a repeated thing going on as uh, muscle memory is going to happen very yeah. soon it's nice thank you thank you thank you for sharing uh, dr vignita we appreciate your comments thank you sir you had a question yeah uh, yeah but in this scenario the trainee had actually uh, it has gone towards posterior caption Yeah, yeah, but uh, definitely, definitely. But the thing is, we have not simulated can opener technique in uh, simulator. That is the main thing. Otherwise, I would have uh, taught in live surgery the same way. Yeah, yeah. So machine has not developed can opener technique because now we are promoting only CCCs as a standardized technique. So we are yeah. and uh, because yeah so whenever i am standing with the trainee and if i notice that a tear run out is going to happen immediately i tell the trainee to uh, pull the capsule you know uh, towards center directly not towards the iris uh, background so that because we are standing with the trainee it's uh, actually this thing will not happen as routine this is extreme case which we have shown to demonstrate yeah <laughs> but uh, yeah yeah definitely yeah so i definitely we say that um, yeah so those uh, those things are covered on the classrooms and one on one basis uh, the idea is to talk about a standard 
capsulotomy technique which is a capsulorexis uh, but we do speak about envelope can opener we even talk about femtosecond second capsular access for that matter so it it is a complete training environment what you see is the simulation which has to follow a standardized pattern which is followed globally so that's why the capsular access but you're absolutely right we we speak about all these things and join them together so that the training is not clueless what should i do next but in simulation there are some things where we need the simulation to stop and move ahead with caution so that's what she was talking about in fact in fact we discuss about uh, different types of capsular tomies and actually preference of capsular tomies as well so even that is been covered in the classroom sessions or even debrief sessions so we take care that a trainee will go with full knowledge if he is with me yeah i know yeah actually it is on the good side sir because uh, we train so many people when you give them the idea of rescue maneuver you don't get to be called at all so they do it on their own and at the end of the day they we will never know what they have done they will say their exercises is complete and we go with the pcr and you find a flap lying over there so it is always better to train your trainee to do it perfectly from the beginning so that the question of rescuing maneuver comes only in comp- challenging cases not in routine cases because an imc can also go to a pcr so in a way perfection is what the simulator aims for and uh, it, it's really good because uh, trust me sir it took me uh, 180 attempts to do a perfect rexus in the simulator even with our experience we didn't get it that easily so yeah yeah and also it's on a simulator that you can actually tell a trainee okay try a run out and try to bring it that in you'd never have a live instructor tell you operating on a patient try doing a run out and then try to bring it in so that's that's the advantage of uh, you know the simulated environment basically i would like to share because i have experienced both the things i was a live a surgery trainer also so here i my bp is very low and nice so that was very different from the live Who, who is our uh, qualified instructor at at Arvin? So, Lipak, would you like to share your experience of going through this journey of getting trained as a trainee and then becoming a trainer eventually? Lipak is our uh, fellow. He joined us, and uh, uh, certain things that we are very uh, proud about is like we have people like Lipak, four or five of them with them who are just one and a half years into our fellowship. and they are now crossing their 1100th mark of surgery and uh, to tell about lipok he has only two complications in his entire 1200 cases so he is uh, he is, and that and i say that is not a good thing like sar said i i wouldn't say that is a good thing because he is not able to manage uh, others complications so now we are going to push push him up to do that so he is an high volume surgeon as well so yes lipok you can send him to us for complications management course sure sir sure sir <laughs> This month I'm a trainer, as I said, trainer, as well as a simulator tra- trainer. So what I experience is a uh, just uh, last week, one of my trainee, she's a fellow. So she was repeatedly ma- making a mis- mistake in the uh, training, that is in the uh, patient mm-hmm. patient mm-hmm. side. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't uh, tell her why she's making a mistake. So I went to wet lab. Um, I mean the simulator. I showed what mistake she's making. If you do this, you'll be making this mistake. So. after i showed her she is not repeating the same mistake so sometimes we can't show, show what mistakes they are making in the patient side because patient side we can't risk, uh, take a risk of making mistakes there so we can take the uh, <coughs> we can take the opportunity of uh, this simulator to show what mistakes they are take, making why they are making we can make the mistakes there and show them that this is the reason you are making this mistake and you can correct it and later on she was comfortable doing that It, that was a keratom injury it's a simple step but she yep. was repeatedly making me making mistakes it was causing dm detachment and all did not much but so it causing patients uh, vision so it was quite helpful just last last week you are <laughs> trainer uh, your experience as trainer of trainee trainee or as a trainee so it was uh, see see i came i came to uh, arabin with all. very minimal sics uh, exposure so after i came i didn't know how how to handle even the instruments properly also so it started with the those basic steps only and forget about surgery i didn't know about we, how to handle the instruments all those basic steps are very important i tell i repeatedly tell tell the 
PGs, fresh PGs, and especially and fellows. Uh, even now, fellows are coming with less experience like me. So I tell them what how to handle the instruments. So even this, this small, small steps are very important. In OT, you can't tell all these things because patient, many patients who are waiting, uh, you can't take much time. On. All these things are we can tell the uh, simulator how to handle all those instruments. And if they are making mistakes, <coughs> uh, see, I was making uh, lots of mistakes in the uh, tunnel also. So my instructor, uh, she taught me how to do the, those uh, in the correct way, like tunnel making, you know. So I improved it, and it, maybe it, that's why it's, uh, the, my complexion also is, it has reduced. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> you are very humble, Lipok. Yeah. But uh, thank you for sharing your experience as a trainer and a trainee. Thank you very much. Thank you.